Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics, and in this video, I'd like to take a look at the other side of the economic coin. I discussed inflation yesterday, and I want to discuss growth a little bit here, uh, based on a House of Lords report expressing concern at the serious lack of economically active working age adults in the UK, which is feared to herald long term weak growth and continued high inflation. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the Economic Affairs Committee just released a report entitled, Where Have All the Workers Gone? It is in reference to the sudden drop in available workers in the UK in the wake of both COVID and Brexit. Basically, the labour force in the UK took a double whammy. Due to various reasons, which I'll go over, the domestic workforce shrank due to COVID, both directly and indirectly. And then Brexit prevented us from replenishing it. And as I alluded to in, in the video yesterday, the government may see advantages in having severe labour shortages in the UK. So it's not necessarily a matter of incompetence that the Tories are doing nothing about it. So the first thing to point out would be a graph in the report. Now it shows the number of jobs vacancies in the UK and you can see a drop after the banking crisis and then a steady increase over the next few years. Then a huge drop again in 2020 as parts of the economy were literally shut down or severely scaled back. Since then, the number of vacancies has risen, but very steeply. Interestingly, it looks like it's slightly in decline in recent months, but still historically high. Uh, but we'll look at that bit first, because you may think, oh, if it's coming down, it's actually going to be all right, Traject follow the trajectory. You, but you, you wonder if the reason for this is that the labour shortages, Brexit trade barriers, and the high cost of energy for businesses has led to a slightly light, lower demand for workers due to the following. First, businesses simply having to close the doors and call it a day. Obviously, if businesses close down, all of a sudden there's less demand for labour. You know, and we know this has been happening a lot in hospitality and hospitality is going to keep cropping up here. Second, businesses who need to trade with the EU shifting some or more of their operations abroad. Now, this has been happening ever since we left the single market. I'm not aware of any sudden influx in the last few months. So I would speculate that the closure of businesses is the more likely impact here. And what I would say is that it, it's unusual for the number of jobs available to go down as we approach Christmas. Normally, it's the busiest time of the year for trade. Uh, and, and, and the time when businesses, including in hospitality, if anything, are trying to recruit more. But the economy is in decline. With latest news today, which I may have to talk about in another video as well, is the economy actually shrunk more than it was first believed in the third quarter. So the economy is contracting. We're basically in recession. And a drop in the number of vacancies does follow recession. As we can see from the drop following the banking crisis. You know, when businesses go to the wall, obviously then there's not as many jobs needed. So the slight drop we see here is another marker of recession. So it's not like it's just going to get back to normal value, unless, of course, our economy shrinks and stays shrunk. You know, remember that all a recession is, is when productivity goes down. And where productivity is down, it's because businesses are closing or scaling back. But despite this recession, the number of vacancies still remains very high. So that's a lot of businesses who are still trying to get workers in. You know, and in terms of why the number of vacancies is so high, seems to be a number of factors. But what must be remembered is, if we cannot, if we cannot Two things, one of two things happens, right? Either the businesses give up and say, we can't get those workers, so they scale back and your economy remains permanently limited with growth. Or you get those workers into those jobs in order to boost growth. So we have to think, so why has it happened and how are we going to get those workers? So one factor is the extra demand for hospitality as a result of COVID restrictions. So what happened was, according to the Lord's report, and this ties in with other reports I've seen, so there were a load of people who weren't allowed to go out during parts of the, the, the pandemic, which is still going on, despite what it says in the media. And so they were pent up, like, oh, I want to go out, want to go for the pub, want to go for the pub, can't go to the pub. Some of them saving money because they can't go to the pub. Once the restrictions are removed, pub, off to the pub. Large increase in demand for hospitality, right? Which then meant you needed to take on way more staff. 
A second factor was a similar explosion in job migration. So COVID also brought this period when people couldn't really change jobs. It's like they might have been ready to change jobs. Oh, no, no, because furlough and stuff like that. So then this pushed all the job moves into this period where restrictions ended. So the restrictions ended. All of a sudden, those people wanting to get new jobs, getting new jobs. So you had a massive amount of job migration, which meant, of course, when they leave, at least temporarily, there's a vacancy left behind. Now, those two factors are short term. You, you certainly don't think the Bank of England would be overly concerned if there were significant, if these were the significant factors, because it would know, well, it's basically going to be over very soon. It's fine. And indeed, the report says that the changes to the labour supply are the major factor. So there's been a reduction in labour supply, like the, literally the number of workers available. And this is not the first we've heard of this. We know that the pandemic significantly reduced the proportion of people in their 50s and 60s who were economically active. Number of reasons for this. Long COVID, much longer delays for hospital treatment for all sorts of conditions. So poor health is a reason for many not working. You know, the government, again, I'm seeing being urged to do more to help, you know, older people with health conditions get back into the workplace. Some will have retired early due to the upheaval. We also know that a lot, uh, you know, we, we lost a lot of migrant workers who went home as the pandemic kicked in and just didn't come back. In some cases, our post-Brexit immigration terms just made it too difficult to do so, too much hassle. The report notes that up until the pandemic, labour supply had grown due to net immigration, raising the state pension age and increasing the number of women in work. All of these things had allowed our labour force to swell. But this increase in labour supply is in reverse now. And the main reason is put down to people leaving the workplace rather than reductions in immigration. After all, we know that although EU-based immigration is down since Brexit, we've actually just increased immigration from the rest of the world, like Asia and, and Africa. But I think that's fine. I think the Brexiteers, I think what they hated was white people from Europe coming over here with jobs. I think they're cool with people from Asia and Africa. At least that's why I assume. You know, we were recently treated to a bit of an explosion of, of gammon uh, as the data showed that immigration was at record levels, wouldn't we? Mind you, the numbers were inflated by one-off events like offering asylum to people from Ukraine and Hong Kong. But it didn't do much to diffuse the ranting, did it? But the point is that although we've lost out on workers from the EU, the government have encouraged more immigration from like Asia and Africa. The report notes that there are almost 9 million economically inactive people of working age. Well over half a million more than before COVID. So that's like the major issue. It also states that we are the only developed economy where economic activity rates have not recovered to pre-pandemic levels. So just, and again it all ties in, just like we are the only advanced economy not to have recovered the size of our economy, our GDP, to pre-COVID levels, we're the only one not to have recovered economic activity rates, that's like people in work, to pre-pandemic levels. The only one. Now, as I've alluded to in this discussion so far, and as the report certainly highlights, along with other reports I've read, the problem of labour shortages in the UK is complex. That is to say, there are numerous factors. The solution would be just as complex, with numerous solutions really needed. And some would be obvious and some not so obvious. We can see that COVID had an impact. We can see that Brexit's having an impact. We can see the impact of government policies that are not related to either COVID or Brexit. But when you have a report saying that the UK is the only developed economy in the world whose economic activity has not returned to pre-pandemic levels, one thing is certain. Regardless of how much each of the various factors are contribut contributing to this phenomenon, if we are the only country still lagging behind, then government policy has to be behind it. It's the only constant. We cannot claim it's the fault of anything that did not also affect advanced economies. If the government, the government always try and blame something external, but everything external is affecting other economies as well. We are the only ones lagging behind. That is because we have done something different internally, different to everyone else, that has harmed our economic recovery. They quoted another research group 
who said that if our economic activity rate growth matched countries such as France, I always pick on France because it's right next door, same size population, same size economy, right? We would have an extra million people in the UK workforce right now. And a million workers is basically what we're short of. And here we come to the crux of the problem and the inevitable consequences. Our economy is effectively a measure of productivity. If we have vacancies, that is productivity not occurring. If we have vacancies that remain unfilled for a long time, you know, to the level we have, that's a lot of productivity not occurring. Now, if part of the problem is poor health, you could say, well, we can address this by increasing the capacity of our healthcare. But the Tories are continuing to reduce capacity. If part of the problem is a lack of migrant workers, then the Tories are also continuing to make that more difficult to address. Yes, they are issuing more visas to people from outside Europe, but that is an expensive administrative process for all concerned. And extra business costs also drive down useful productivity. Like useful productivity being that which generates income for workers and tax revenues for the government. Anything else is not useful to society. You know, profits that don't do one of those two things is not useful to society. If you make doing business more expensive, incomes go down, taxes go down, because the business will try and preserve the profits. That means we have less investment in public services, which businesses need in order to remain productive, and workers have less money, which means businesses lose in custom. Basically, the main limit on economic growth is going to be our capacity to fill vacancies. We're a million workers behind. That is a lot of lost spending in our local communities. It is a lot of lost taxes raised for public services. And the government, having pushed policies that created this constraint to our economic growth, and it has to be the government because all of the countries have recovered now, all of their advanced economies have recovered. And this same government now have the nerve to complain that they can't afford to fund public services properly, as if it's not their fault. Well, how come other governments are not having these problems then? Because they have the same external pressures. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.